All right, so in this video, I would like to attack a really interesting problem that can help us apply uh, a few different concepts in physics in order to answer what may initially ostensibly seem like a relatively difficult question that can actually be pretty simple to answer um, once, you, once you look at the best way to approach this. So uh, this is actually a problem taken directly from a webassign.net homework assignment from Surway's College Physics, 9th edition pertaining specifically to chapter 15, electric forces and electric fields. So I'm going to read the problem verbatim for us, and then we will go through and uh, break it up into pieces and attack it and see if we can walk through all the steps. So the problem states, quote, A molecule of DNA deoxyribonucleic acid is 2.33 microns long. The ends of the molecule become slightly ionized, negative on one end, positive on the other. The helical molecule acts like a spring and compresses 1% upon becoming charged and remains in this equilibrium position. Determine the effective spring constant of the molecule. All right, so we need to figure out the spring constant of the molecule, which is definitely going to require us to use Hooke's law. Hooke's law, if we remember, states that Fs, or the force of a spring, is simply equal to negative Kx, with negative K being the spring constant here, K, uh, x being the change in length between uh, the relaxed and compressed states of the uh, spring, and Fs, of course, being the force of that spring. So, what do we need to do? Well, we're going to need to figure out x for ourselves, and we're going to need to figure out Fs for ourselves. Well, x is not going to be that difficult. x is just 1% of 2.33. So we can actually go ahead and write that down because that's pretty easy to calculate. So if x is 1% of 2.33 microns, then x is going to be equal to 0 0.0233 microns. And because we're going to need to be using Hooke's law and eventually, as I'm about to bring up, Coulomb's law, let's go ahead and get everything into SI units here. So uh, microns is great, but we need to go ahead and see how many meters is this actually. So this is going to be 2.33 times 10 to the negative 8 meters. Now, just a quick note on my notation here. When I write E negative 8, I'm just meaning times 10 to the negative 8th power. I'm using this notation. Uh, don't confuse this E with the E we're going to use uh, for the charge of, uh, the charge of an electron or a proton uh, or anything like that. This is just a, a shorthand for notation to write a scientific notation. So 2.33 times 10 to the negative 8th meters is our x here. So we have x and we need k, so that means uh, that we're going to have to figure out fs for ourselves, like I said. So what is fs? Well, that's the force on this spring. Well, in that case, the force on this spring, because we know it's ionized, is just going to be equal to the force on it due to the electric field, or the electric force that's going on. So, we can actually figure that out through what? Through Coulomb's law. Well, Coulomb's law states that force of an electric charge is equal to negative Ke, Coulomb's constant, times the absolute value of Q1 times Q2 over R squared. Let's make a better R there. Times R squared. All right. So Ke, like we said, uh, Coulomb's constant. And then Q1 and Q2 are just the, end of the two charges about which we are concerned. And R squared is the distance or radius between those two charges. So since we have this new expression, let's rewrite Hooke's law in order to incorporate this. So if we do that, we can come up that the force on the spring is simply equal to the electric force, which is, as we said, equal to negative Ke times the absolute value of Q1 times Q2 all over R squared. So now this means that we have all the information we need in order to figure out what the electric charge or what the electric force is, which will tell us what the spring force is, which will allow us to only have one missing variable in our equation and bring us directly to what K is, what the spring constant is, which is what we're looking for, what we care about in this problem. 
Well, we need to first remember, uh, let's go ahead and set this up. We're going to switch colors here. How about yellow? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yellow is fine. All right. Um, <clears throat> electric force is equal to Coulomb's constant, which is, I'm going to write it as 8.9875 times 10 to the ninth. And then we're going to multiply this by the absolute value of Q1 and Q2. But wait, what are those charges? It doesn't specify in the problem. That's correct, it doesn't, but in not doing so, it kind of also does. It just says that one end is positive and one end is negative. So we can treat those charge values as just E, which is the charge of a proton or the charge of a neutron, because that is a proton or a neutron being added or subtracted to something is what is going to change the charge by one charge unit or one charge unit E. So we can write off on the side here that E is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Bearing that in mind, we can write that down for our charges here, 1.6 e to the negative 19th, and because uh, we have this multiplied by itself, we can just say it's that absolute value squared, right? That's just going to be easier over R squared. Now, what is our R? Well, our R is just the initial length of that spring, which was 2.33 microns, which now, though, is, of course, 2.33 uh, times I. Wait, we'll actually have to do a little bit of extra math here. We, it may be easy to say, yeah, it's 2.33 times uh, uh, 10 to the negative 8th meters, but it's not because... That's looking at 1% uh, which of the initial length, which was going to which change the decimal places quite a great deal. So if we need, need 2.33 microns in meters, that's going to be 2.33 times 10 to the negative sixth meters. So we can write that down here as 2.33, 10 to the negative sixth, of course, squared. So this is our new expression, and this tells us that let's switch colors here again, the Fe is, I'll make that a better E, the Fe is just equal to 4.238 times 10 to the negative 17 newtons. All right, so great. This is extremely useful information. Now that we have that, what do we need to do? Well, let's go to a new page and let's start rearranging things again. If we know that Fs is equal to Fe, which is equal to negative Kx, then we know that 4.238 newtons is equal to Kx. Well, let's go ahead and rearrange negative Kx, sorry. Let's go ahead and rearrange this again because we want to get K by itself. So let's just divide this by x, divide this by x. Very simple. We'll cancel those out. And that will allow us to arrive at the new conclusion that 4.238x is equal to negative K. So what is x? Well, we'd already figured out that x is, you know, as described in Hooke's Law, the difference in the initial uh, and final values of the spring when it is being contracted. So we have that x is 2.33 times 10 to the negative 8 meters. So we now have 4... 4. Point, let's see. Yeah. Like, okay, 4.238 times 2.33 times 10 to the negative 8 equals negative K. Therefore, this shows us that 
negative k is just equal to 1.82 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons per meter. And we have arrived at our spring constant. So this was an interesting problem and one that I really liked. Let's go ahead and, and recap everything because it allowed us to sort of think outside the box in that we needed to find the spring constant. And, we, and so that allowed us or that necessitated that we use Hooke's law. But Hooke's law requires that we find the change in the length of the spring between its relaxed and contracted states. Easy enough, but it also uh, requires that we find the force of that spring. And we didn't know what that was just from looking at the problem, but we could figure it out because we knew that it had to be equal to the electric force. So that allowed us to combine Hooke's law and Coulomb's law into one big problem, equating those using some known values like Coulomb's constant and the charge of E and rearranging everything to give us our final value. So a pretty interesting problem, pretty simple. Any questions, feel free to post them in the comments.